Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we'll be discussing the Ulysse Norden Sonata Cathedral. You can see this sonata and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for the Cadillac of alarm watches with accessories included in the sale, additional high-resolution images, and of course, complete pricing information for this watch. Now, on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, this is a lot of timepiece. It's a lot of complexity. It's a lot of white gold. And although it is nominally a 42 millimeter case, it looks and it wears far larger. Before we go into the history of the Sonata, let's talk about the fit and the feel. Now, that is a 42 millimeter case in theory. So if you were to measure from, you know, approximately two o'clock to eight o'clock, you might get something approximately 42 millimeters, but look at the chronograph, or rather I should say the GMT plus minus pushers on each flank of the case. Look at the shrouds about the crown used to wind the alarm, to turn it on and off, to set the double digit date, to set the alarm time as well as the center time. This is a watch that swells far beyond its nominal measurements. and. Although it's not exceptionally thick at 13.5 millimeters, it does have deep and heavy lugs. They span 50 millimeters across the broad, but remember, that edge-to-edge -edge measurement isn't the true ergonomic sum of this watch, as the strap, which is massive and conforms to the flow of the case flank, will fight the curve of your wrist. It's got a virtual flare to it, such that I can honestly describe the fit of this watch as approaching that of a 47 millimeter or 48 millimeter conventional round case. It's big, and again, because of the mass of white gold, it's simply incredibly heavy. Although some might say that's the ultimate satisfaction of owning a premium watch, the feeling of heft on the wrist. This watch excites all the senses, aesthetically spectacular. It sounds like a minute repeater, though it's an alarm watch. And of course, with all that gold, you will never forget it's on your wrist. It's matched with a very substantial white gold, double deployant, trigger actuated Ulysse Norden deployant. Now here's the thing, the double deployant fold will help a small wrist a bit because it doesn't have that big one up and over fold that can pinch a small wrist. And and it has the quality of being heavy enough in its own right that it does help to counterbalance the immensely heavy watch head such that when buckled down, even if it's a little bit loose, it doesn't have a tendency to want to move around or capsize or turn over on the wrist. Now the watch, again, like I mentioned, has an incredibly substantial strap. You can see that although it will fight a smaller wrist, it will look absolutely divine on a wrist suited to its proportions. Incredibly thick, bolstered, substantial. It feels like an extra cow, I should say, gave its hide for the bottom and perhaps three or four gaiters for the alligator leather on the top. Very impressive, and it matches the specification of the watch, Deluxe. Now you heard the alarm, you saw the action of the governor. There's a reason why this has been called the Cadillac of alarm watches or the alarm watch that thinks it's a minute repeater. Frankly, it delivers on both counts, loaded with features. It has a sonorous quality with a tone and sustain and a musicality unmatched by any other alarm watch. Now there's a lot going on on this dial. But when you break it down, it's really quite simple. First, let's talk about the case, because there's nuance everywhere here. All of high polish, the fluted lugs are very Ulysse Norden, but it's the concave bezel that both allows the watch to slide more easily underneath the dress cuff and pairs down some of the visual mass externally. You'll also note that unlike conventional Ulysse Norden watches with their marine chronometer style number plate on the side, this one features a number plate engraved into the bezel at six o'clock. Now on the dial, swooping down from that dramatic Rayhot featuring luminescent pips and blued hour indices, you can see the dial is immensely complicated but nicely balanced. Triple sub-registers, you can see there are two ways of setting this alarm. A countdown that respects a 24-hour scale, so you can set the watch to AM or PM, a feature missing on almost all other alarm watches. You can also clarify whether you're talking about 0800 or 1600 by referring to the 12-hour scale at approximately 1 o'clock on the dial. Plus, it should be noted, and watch carefully here, since the countdown alarm is cued to the time at center. If you adjust your time forward or backwards, the alarm setting keeps track with respect to your time zone such that it will always go off at the correct time when it's armed. Moreover, there is a double digit date. Again, you've got that dual time function. You can move the local hour hand independently using the pushers. When you pull the crown out, then the hands at center and the second time zone 24 hour display at six o'clock move in sync. Now, of course, there's a lot going on here and much of what escapes the eye at first glance 
can be found on the case back where Ulysse Norden's caliber 67 does business. Now, when the Sonata first bowed in 2004, it had a solid case back. Ulysse Norden soon recognized its mistake. This Sonata Cathedral is named because of the double circumferential gongs. They surround the alarm twice. They surround the movement twice, much like a minute repeater. With the combination of those cathedral gongs and the inertial governor on the front of the watch, that's where you get that nicely paced alarm sound that's slower, more stately, and more musical than a conventional rattle. Now, the watch also features a 4 hertz beat rate, 42 hour power reserve. This is not one for the water with a 3 ATM water resistance, and there is immense complexity hiding behind what you see here to the tune of 109 joules. Beautifully rendered, almost everything in this movement is Ulysse Norden to the core. Manufacture, it can indeed be called. And of course, a beautiful treatment of the 22 karat white gold winding mass. It has a beautiful roughed texture and then a lacquered Ulysse Norden anchor logo atop. Handsome on both sides, the watch also features complexity in addition to mechanical complexity, complexity of aesthetics on the dial. You can see the Cote de Genève used as a dial feature. You can see the blued screws, the assembly screws, visible and bare. You can see the interesting tripartite sub-register system with the countdown 24-hour scale, the 12-hour scale, the second time zone anchoring the base of the dial, and of course that gorgeous double-digit date counterbalanced on its opposite flank by the regulator or the governor for the alarm. Naturally, little shocks of red are used in conjunction with silver, gray, and blue. It's handsome. It's uniquely Ulysse Norden. It's one of the few watches in high horology that you can glimpse from across the room and immediately identify. Whether by sight or sound, you're going to love this Ulysse Norden Sonata Cathedral, available for purchase on our website.